Once again, you are welcome to Angel Health Academy. Subject is Community Health Nursing. Topic for the day is Ayush. Formerly, Ayush was known as Indigenous System of Medicine or Indian System of Medicine. An Indigenous System of Medicine is a natural form of medicines outside the stream of Western or allopathic medicines practiced by majority of the doctors all over the world today. In December 1995, Government of India started a Department of Indian Systems of Medicine and Homeopathy, ISM and H. This department, later renamed as Department of Ayush in November 2003, for providing focused attention to the development of education and research in Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha and Homeopathy systems. Ayush is an acronym for Ayurveda, Yoga and Naturopathy, Unani, Siddha and Homeopathy. And these are the six Indian systems of medicines prevalent and practiced in India and some of the neighboring Asian countries with very few exception in some of the developed countries. The acronym of Ayush is A stands for Ayurveda, Y stands for Yoga and Naturopathy, U stands for Unani, S stands for Siddha and H stands for Homeopathy. Let us discuss in detail one by one. And before that, in December 9, 2019, Government of India also introduced a new traditional medicine that is Sova Rikpa in Ayush. The term Sova Rikpa is derived from Bodhi language which means knowledge of healing. It is an ancient Indian medical system which was enriched in the entire uh, place of Trans Himalayan region. So let us discuss in detail about Ayurveda. Origin and Nature of Ayurveda The term Ayurveda is derived from two Sanskrit words Ayur and Veda Ayur means life and Veda means knowledge or science Therefore, literally the meaning of Ayurveda is science of life or way of life Ayurveda is a holistic system of medicine in India which is more than 5000 years old and it forms the part of the ancient Indian text Adharva Veda the comprehensive documentation about Ayurveda were done in around 1000 BC by Charaga in Charaga Samhita and by Susruda in Susruda Samhita. Susruda is known as father of Indian surgery. Next is the theoretical basis of Ayurveda. The principles of Ayurveda. The principles of Ayurveda is based on the concept of five basic elements and three doshas. According to Ayurveda, the whole universe, that is all the objects and living things in the universe is made up of five basic elements known as Panjamaha Buddhas. So, Agasha or Ether, Vayu or Air, Agni or Fire, Jala or Water, Prithvi or Earth. These are the five elements in Panjamaha Buddhas. So, that is Panjamaha Buddhas in Ayurveda includes Air, Water, Sky, Fire and Earth. Thus, practice of Ayurveda is based on the theory of Panjamaha Buddhas. These five elements are represented in a combination of Tridoshas, which is known as Vada, Pitta and Kapha. Vada means ether and air, Pitta means fire and Kapha means water and earth. So, these are also known as the humors. The diagnosis in Ayurveda. The tenfold examination in Ayurveda is known as Dashvidha Pariksha. It includes Pragrithi, that is the basic nature of a person. Vigrithi, that is a vitation or pathological state of the human body. And Sara, that is qualities of the tissue. Sattva, that is the subtle refined essence of our tissues. And Samanan, that is a compactness of the body. Praman, that is a physical status of the body. Ahar Shakti, that is the digestive power of the body. Vyayam Shakti, that is the ability to do the physical activity and exercise by the person. And Satmya, that is the adaptability to the changing environment. And Vaya means the age and sex of the persons. So, these are the tenfold examination in Ayurveda. The tenfold examination in Ayurveda is made through Ashtavidh Pariksha. That is the eightfold examination. The eightfold examination in Ayurveda includes observation of pulse, observation of urine or examination of urine, examination of excreta, examination of the tongue or observation of the tongue, examination of the voice or speech, examination of the touch and examination of the eyes and vision of the person and overall appearance or structure of the body of the person. So, the eightfold examination in Ayurveda is known as Nadi, Mutra, Mala, Jihwa, Shabda, Sparsha, Driga and Agrdi. Next is the treatment in Ayurveda. The treatment in Ayurveda is 
basically individualized. There are six main type of treatment in Ayurveda that is Shodhana therapy, Shamana therapy, Padya Vyavastha, Nidan Parivarjan, Sattva Jaya and Rasayana Sevana therapy. Let us see in detail about the type of the treatment in Ayurveda. Shodhana therapy means purification treatment, cleanliness of the body. Shamana therapy means palliative treatment. Patya Vyavastha means prescription of the appropriate diet and activity. Then Nidhan Parivarjan means avoidance of causes and situation which leading to disease and disease aggravation. Then Sattva Jaya means psychotherapy. Rasayana Sevana therapy means adaptogen, use of adaptogen that is including immunomodulators, anti-stress medications and rejuvenation drugs. The branches or specialties in Ayurveda. There were eight branches of specialty during Charaga and Susruta period in Ayurveda but now we have more than 16 type of uh, specialties in Ayurveda. The eight types of branches in Ayurveda includes Kaya Chigilsa that is general or internal medicines, Kaumada Bhritya that is pediatrics, Buddha Vidya or Graha Chigilsa that is psychiatry. The fourth one is Shalkya that is it includes ENT, ophthalmology and dentistry. Shalya Tandra that is surgery. Then Agatha Tandra or Visha Tandra that is toxicology. Rasayana Sevana therapy that is geriatric or uh, care of old age people and Vaji Karana means the science of virility or aphrodisiac therapy. Aphrodisiac therapy means related to sexual dysfunction of the male and female. So because of these eight specialty areas in Ayurveda, Ayurveda is called as Ashtanga Ayurveda. There are now more than as I said more than 16 specialty branches in Ayurveda. Next is education and research work in Ayurveda. Ayurveda has got a developed system of education that is both undergraduate program and postgraduate program even PhD in Ayurveda. So undergraduate program includes BAMS that is Bachelor of Ayurveda Medicine and Surgery. That is a 5 year degree program plus 6 months internship. Then MAMS that is Master degree in Ayurveda. The 3 years course in various specialties in Ayurveda and we have even PhD in Ayurveda and other various specialty uh, programs in Ayurveda. The uniformity and standards of Ayurvedic education are maintained by the Central Council of Indian Medicine by the Central Government. Then to develop the high standards of training and research in all the aspects of Ayurveda system of medicines, we have a National Institute of Ayurveda, Jaipur, which was established in 1976. Then practice and drug standards in Ayurveda. Ayurveda at present we have both government and private practice. The uniform standards in preparation of the Ayurvedic drugs is maintained by the Drugs and Cosmetic Act, Ayurvedic Pharmacopoeia Committee that is APC, Central Drug Standard Control Organization and even Ayush Department in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So that is about the Ayurveda. The next session is about Yoga and Naturopathy. The second acronym of Ayush is yoga and naturopathy. First is about yoga. Origin and nature of yoga. Yoga is an ancient science that was described in Vedas. It was propounded by Padanjali about 2500 years ago. The word yoga is derived from the root word yujir yoga that means to unite or to bind. According to Jnanavalkya, yoga means the union. That is union of the individual spirit that is Jivatman with the universal spirit that is to the Paramatman. So it is a union of the Jivatman to the Paramatmans according to Jnanavalikya. So thus yoga is a science which helps to coordinate the body and mind more effectively and it is very popular for the stress reductions. And various yoga has given rise to the concept of modern Hinduism. These are Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Hada Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, etc. The theoretical basis of yoga. There are eight limbs or components of yoga. They are Yamas. Yamas means ethical or external discipline a person has to follow. Then Niyama. Niyama means internal discipline sir, or self-observation by a person. Third one is Asana. Asana is the various postures to do the exercise. Next is Pranayama. Pranayama means breath control. Then Pratyahara. That is withdrawal of our senses. Pratyahara means withdrawal of senses. Then Dharana. Dharana means concentration. Then Dhyana. Dhyana is the meditation. And last one is the eighth limb is Samadhi. That is a state of joy and peace. That is union or integration. 
So the eight limbs or components of yoga includes yamas, niyamas, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana and samadhi. Next is meditation. Meditation is one of the eight elements or limbs in yoga. Dhyana or meditation is a process of prevention of mind from wandering or indulging in unhealthy thoughts through a psychological control of the, our mind. In current scenario, yoga therapy has become very popular to prevent the stress and tensions and to relieve many other problems. Next is four paths of yoga. Yoga has got four paths that is Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Bhakti Yoga and Vyaja Yoga. Karma Yoga means it is a path of action. That is yoga of selfless services to the other people. Selfless services to others. Jnana Yoga is a path of knowledge. That is yoga to union with the supreme through the intellect, knowledge. Then Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is a path of devotion. That is yoga to love to all things. To love all the things. Vyaja Yoga means it is a path of discipline. That is yoga to energize the body and mind. Next is diagnosis and treatment in yoga. There are 12 yogic points in diagnosis and health evaluation in yoga that includes three gunas that is three basic qualities, three doshas that is three humors, three vasanas that is psychological background, then pranas that is pranavayus, then abhyasa that is personal discipline, jiva karma that is lifestyle, chedana that is quality of thoughts, vaja that is quality of speech, ahara that is diet and food habits, then vibharita buddhi that is a destruction behavior of a person, jiva vrittis that is individual body rates, then last one is sankalpa that is ideal of the individuals. So diagnosis and treatment in yoga includes the 12 yogic points that is 3 gunas, 3 doshas, 3 vasanas, prana, abhyasa, Jiva Karma, Chetana, Vaja, Ahara, Vibharita Buddhi, Jiva Vrittis and Sankalpa. Next is about the five principles of yoga therapy. Yoga therapy has got or treatment in yoga has got five principles. That is proper exercise, proper breathing, proper relaxation, proper diet and positive thinking and meditation. So the five principles of yoga therapy includes proper exercise, proper breathing, proper relaxation, proper diet and positive thinking and meditation. The next is about the naturopathy. Origin and nature of the naturopathy. Naturopathy incorporates the variety of natural approaches. It includes actively through diet or nutrition and exercise and passively through the rest and relaxation. Naturopathy is also a way of life. It is based on mainly application of simple laws of the nature and it, and it is closely associated with the Ayurveda. Then theoretical basis of naturopathy. Naturopathy believes that human body is composed of five great elements like a Panja Mahabudas, imbalances of these elements may lead to or create diseases. The five elements of naturopathy are same air, water, mud, heat and space. Air, water, mud, heat and space. The diagnosis and treatment in uh, naturopathy includes uh, there are 10 different uh, methods which is applied in care of care in naturopathy that is water therapy, air therapy, fire therapy, Space therapy, mud therapy, food therapy, massage therapy, acupressure therapy, magnetotherapy and chromo or color therapy. The education and research work in yoga and naturopathy. So there are diploma in yoga programs and yoga naturopathy and yoga therapy and there is a BSc in yoga and yoga naturopathy and yoga therapy. Same like there is an MSc program in yoga and yoga therapy and moreover we have a PhD in yoga and naturopathy. The quality and the standard of education in yoga and naturopathy are maintained by the Morarji Deshai National Institute of Yoga in New Delhi and National Institute of Naturopathy that is NIN also established in Pune by Government of India to maintain the standards in naturopathy education program. That is about yoga and naturopathy. The third acronym of Ayush is Unani system of medicines. Unani system of medicine. Origin and nature of Unani system of medicines. The Unani system of medicine originated in Greece. 
It is introduced in India at 11th century by Arab and Persian sellers. The theoretical basis of Unani system of medicine. The Unani system of medicine was based on the principles of Hippocrates and Galen. The principles of Unani system of medicine. The Unani medicine is divided into two parts, theory and practice. The theory is divided into three parts, the theory of naturals, the theory of causes and the theory of science. The seven things which are natural in Unani medicine are elements, temperaments, humors, organs, forces or powers, actions or functions and the spirits. Let us discuss in detail about the naturals in Unani system of medicine. First is elements. Unani system of medicine depends for basic elements. First is fire, second is air, third is water and fourth one is earth. Fire, air, water and earth. Next is temperaments. There are nine kinds of temperaments in Unani system of medicines in which eight are non-equable and one is equable. Of the eight non-equable, we have four single and four compounds. Four singles are hot, cold, wet or moist and dry. The four compounds in Unani system of medicines are hot and dry, hot and wet, cold and dry and cold and wet. Elements with the temperament. The force of fire is hot and dry. The force of air is considered as a hot and wet. The force of water is considered in Unani system of medicine as cold and wet. And the force of earth is considered as cold and dry. Third one is humors. There are four kinds of humors in Unani system of medicines. First is blood. Second one is phlegm. Third one is yellow bile. And last one is black bile. That is dam, belgam, safra and sauda. Unani system is based on the four humor theory of the Hippocrates. The humors are assigned temperament that is blood is considered as a hot and wet, phlegm is cold and wet, yellow bile is hot and dry and black bile is cold and dry. Any changes or disturbances in humors bring about the changes in temperament of a person which affect the health status of that particular person. Fourth natural is organs. There are four kinds of organs in Unani system of medicines. Some are principal organs comparable to elements and metals and others are the servants to these principal organs. There are four principal organs in Unani system of medicines. They are the brain, the heart, the liver and the two testicles in males and two ovaries in females. Fifth natural is forces. There are three kinds of forces in Unani system of medicine. That is natural forces, vital forces and psychic forces. Natural, vital and psychic forces. The sixth natural is actions or functions. There are two kinds of actions in Unani system of medicines. Some are single actions and others are compound actions. Single actions. These are the actions that are achieved each by a single force like attraction, retention, digestion and uh, propulsions. Others are compound actions. Compound actions are actions which are achieved by two or more forces. The last natural is spirits. There are three kinds of spirits in Unani system of medicines. Natural spirit, vital spirit and uh, psychic spirit. The natural spirit emanates from the liver and which penetrates through the veins into the whole body and this is the servant to the natural forces. The vital spirit emanates from the heart, penetrates through the arteries into the whole body. And this is the servant to the vital forces. The last spirit is psychic spirit which emanates from the brain and which penetrates through the nerves into the whole body. And this is the servant to the psychic forces. In short, according to the principles of Unani system of medicines, our body is made up of following proximal qualities. For basic elements of human body, for temperament or quality or states of human body and for humors of human body. The four basic elements of human body includes fire, air, water and earth. The temperament or qualities or states of human body includes hot, cold, wet and dry. For humors of human body in Unani system of medicines includes blood, phlegm or sputum, yellow bile and black bile. When there is an equilibrium in the humors and the functions of the body, the Unani system of medicine considered the person is normal. When the equilibrium of the humors is disturbed and the functions of the body are abnormal, that state in Unani system of medicine is called a disease. Diagnosis and treatment in Unani system of medicines. Unani Hakims or Unani physicians can classify the patients according to the 
or according to their temperament. There are three types of classification of patients. One is hot temperament individuals. They are physically strong and have a good digestion center, quick temper. Then wet or moist temperament individuals, they are obese and exclusively salivate. The last category is cold and dry temperament individuals. They have good appetite and prominent blood vessels. The diagnosis in Unani system of medicine includes pulse reading, urine examination, stool examination and observation of color of the skin and the gait of the person or patient. The treatment in Unani system of medicines. The Hakim or Unani physicians believe in four lines or modes of treatment. First is regimental therapy, second is dietotherapy, third is pharmacotherapy and last one is surgery. The regimental therapy includes exercise that is regular and correct massages, steam baths, fomentation, emesis, purging and enema. Dietotherapy covers normal diet or liquid diet for flourishing out the system and even semi-solid diet that will allow the digestive system to rest without resorting to the comparative extreme of a liquid diet. So there are three types of diet, normal diet, liquid diet and semi-solid diet in dietotherapy of Unani system of medicine. The next is pharmacotherapy. The drugs made from medicinal plants, herbs, minerals, metallic or marine products and even from animal origin are used in the treatment of the diseases in Unani system of medicines. Most of the drugs are herbal in origin and these are prepared with no side effects. Hakim established the following principles. If a drug produces heat in the body, it will be considered as a stimulant. If the drug is produces coldness in the body, those drugs considered as a depressant. The last treatment aspect is surgery, which includes cupping, leaching, venous section, cauterization, etc. Education and research work in Unani system of medicines. Undergraduate program includes a BUMS, Bachelor of Unani Medicine and Surgery, a five-year degree program plus six months internship. Then a postgraduate program includes MUMS, Master degree in Unani Medicines. That is a course of three years in various specialties. There are eight postgraduate courses in uh, Unani system of medicines and moreover we have a PhD in Unani Padi. The uniformity and standards of education are maintained by the Central Council of Indian Medicine by the Central Government. The National Institute of Unani Medicines NIUM was established jointly by the Government of India and the Government of Karnataka in 1984 at Bangalore to develop the high standards of training and research in all the aspects of Unani system of medicines. Then practice and drug standards. The standards in preparation of drugs in Unani medicines is uh, maintained by Unani Pharmacopoeia Committee established in the year 1964. Then Central Council of Research in Unani medicines, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Department of Ayush in New Delhi. This is about a Unani system of medicine. So the next session is about a Siddha system of medicine. Siddha Vaidya or Siddha system of medicine is considered as the oldest documented medicine system in the world. Ayurveda and Siddha system are truly Indian in origin and the development. They differ very little in theory and the practice. While Ayurveda practiced throughout the states of India, Siddha is restricted to Tamil Nadu. So Siddha system believed to have evolved in Tamil Nadu. Siddha literature are in Tamil. Siddha system of medicine is largely practiced in Tamil speaking areas of India and it is exclusively linked with the Tamil culture and Tamil civilization. Origin and nature of Siddha system of medicine. Siddha system was flourished during first Tamil Sangam period that is 6th and 7th century BC. The earliest references on Siddha medicines are in the Sangam literature such as Tolagapiyam and Thirumandiram. Actually, it was practiced by Siddharas who aimed to maintain the perfect health in order to achieve the Siddhi or heavenly bliss. Siddharas were saintly figures who achieved result in medicine through the practice of yoga. It is believed that the 18 Siddharas contributed for the development of Siddha system of medicine. The next is principle of Siddha system. Siddha system believes that the universe consists of two essential and it is that is matter and energy. The Siddhas call them Siva that is male and Shakti that is female creation. The matter cannot exist without energy inherent in it and vice versa. The two coexist and are inseparable and they are in the primordial elements of Bhutas. Bhutas are similar to the five elements of Panjamaha Bhutas. In Siddha medicine it is 
solid, fluid, radiance, gas and ether. That is manna or nilam, near, nerup, katr and veli. Siddha system of medicine believes that these five elements are present in every substance but in a different proportions. The human body is also made up of these five elements in different combinations. In Siddha system of medicine, the physiological functions in the body is mediated by three substances or dravyas. They are vadam, pittam and karpam. In each and every cell of the body, these three doshas coexist and functions harmoniously. According to Siddha system of medicine, vatam is formed by agasha and vayu. It controls the nervous actions such as movement, sensation, etc. Pittam is formed by Tea or nerup, it controls the metabolic activities of the body, digestion, assimilation, warmth, etc. Karpam is formed by manna and neer. It controls the stability of a person. According to Siddha system of medicines, when the equilibrium of this vatam, pittam and karpam upsets, the disease sets in the human being. The diagnosis and treatment methods in Siddha system of medicines. The diagnosis involves examination of pulse, examination of urine, examination of excreta, examination of the tongue and uh, examination of voice and speech by touch, uh, then examination of or observation of eyes or vision and examination of or observation of overall appearance of the body of a person. The treatment in Siddha medicine is individualized that varies from individual to individual. The treatment for the imbalance of the Tridoshas are made up of the five elements. The drugs are mainly made up of five elements. Next is the preparation of Siddha medicines. Siddha medicines are like a bus mass that is calcinated metal and minerals, churna that is powder in form, then kashaya that is decoctions, lehim that is lehya or leham that is confections, then Grida is medicated ghee preparation, sir. Thaila is medicated oil, sir. Guligai that is pills or tablets, sir. Chenduram that is metal complexes, and Meridid that is waxes, and it is made up of some other preparations, sir. So the preparation of Siddha medicines includes sir, Basma, Churna, Kashaya, Lehya, Grida, Thaila, Guligai, Chenduram, Meridid, or other preparations. Education and research work in Siddha system of medicines. The undergraduate program includes BSMS that is Bachelor of Siddha Medicine and Surgery, a 5 year degree program. Then postgraduate program includes MSMS that is Master degree in Siddha Medicines. It's a course of 3 years in various specialties. There are many postgraduate diploma courses in Siddha system of medicines and moreover we have a PhD in Siddha Medicine. The uniformity and standards of education are maintained by the Central Council of Indian Medicine by the Central Government. The National Institute of Siddha, NIS Chennai, standardized the education and research work in Siddha medicine. Next is practice and drug standards in Siddha system of medicines. Siddha Pharmacopoeia Committee, SPC, is constituted to establish the standards in Siddha medicine. Then, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Department of Ayush Noodle, he also maintained the standards and quality of the Siddha medicines. That's all about the Siddha system of medicines. The last acronym of Ayush H stands for homeopathy. The word homeopathy derived from two Greek words, homeos and pathos. Homeos means like and pathos means suffering. So that the meaning of homeopathy is like disease or like suffering. Homeopathy is an alternative medical practice in which extremely dilute amounts of the certain natural substances are used to treat the various ailments. Origin and development of homeopathy. Homeopathy was discovered in Germany 200 years back. That was in late 18th century by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. Homeopathy is based on the theory of healing similia similibus curandis. Similia similibus curandis which means likes are cured by likes. Likes are cured by likes or let likes be treated by likes which means any substance capable of producing artificial symptoms on an healthy individual can cure the same symptoms in a natural disease. The theoretical basis and principles of homeopathy. There are many principles in homeopathy. The most important principles are law of similia, law of simplex, law of minimum dose and law of potentiated remedy. Let us discuss in detail about the, the most important principles of homeopathy. The first principle is the law of similia or similia similibus curandum. 
a substance which can cause symptoms in a healthy person can in homeopathy non toxic micro doses stimulate cure in others suffering with similar symptoms regardless of the causes similium is the term for the remedy that best matches a patient's symptoms for example the honey bee remedy apis gives a powerful remedy for cases with the edema burning stinging pain and patients with the respiratory reactions the second principle is law of simplex that is the principle of single remedy homeopathy generally uses only a single medicines that is only one homeopathic remedy is given at any one time selecting correct medicine done on the basis of the individualization that means the remedy varies from individual to individual for the same disease homeopathy believes that it would be difficult to ascertain the action of multiple homeopathic remedies given all at once the third principle is law of minimum dose in homeopathy the dose is preferred as just sufficient to correct the diseased state of the person homeopathy believes that the drugs given to the individual in material doses frequently can cause side effects or adverse reactions that means the smallest possible dose so as to maximize beneficial effects and minimize the side effects sometimes the repetition of dose is determined by the individual's response to the remedy in short in homeopathy less is better the last principle is the potentiated remedy homeopathic remedies though it is made from natural substances such as plants minerals animals etc are manufactured through the process of serial dilution then finally it get a very dilute extract this process designed to arouse a dynamic nature of the medicines so for example the remedy is diluted with 1% of the remedy to 99% of water this is called the potentiated remedy next is diagnosis homeopathy use a different techniques of diagnosis which use physical examination medical examination of the client modalities of the symptoms and the specific individualized informations the modalities of the symptoms means identifying the symptoms change in a patient are uh, depending various factors or weather changes etc then next is specific individualized information in homeopathy it also collect the specific individualized information on mood likes and dislikes physical mental and emotional state of the patient life circumstances of the individual and any physical or emotional illness of the person this information is called a symptom picture this is matched to the drug picture in the materia medica and used to determine the appropriate homeopathic remedies that is individualized remedies for the client then treatment homeopathic treatments are highly individualized there is no uniform prescribing standard for homeopathic practitioners homeopathic treatment is based on the individual specific symptoms and personal level of health to stimulate their own healing ability the choice of medicine is based on a person total symptom picture homeopathy uses animal plant mineral and synthetic substance in its preparations and generally referring to them using latin names or terms the forms of medicines in homeopathy the most important form of homeopathy medicine is lactose that is milk sugar tablet or round pills that is made from sucrose then powder form or tiny granules for babies who have no teeth then ointments to rub on the skin mother's tincture this can be mixed with water to make a lotions for bathing gargling or rubbing on the skin etc then liquid potencies for those who are allergic to lactose they would be given liquid potencies then homeopathy medicine also available in clicker packs which make it easy to drop pills straight into the mouth the next is education and the research work in homeopathy there are undergraduate programs and postgraduate programs like bhms bachelor of homeopathy medicine and surgery and mhms the master of homeopathy medicine and surgery and md homeopathy even a phd in homeopathy also available to maintain the standard of education the central council of research in homeopathy is established in march 1978 Moreover, National Institute of Homeopathy was established in Calcutta to promote the education and the research in homeopathy medicines. Then, practice and the drug standards. Homeopathy practice by both the private and the government practitioners and homeopathy medicines are available even from the dispensaries. Homeopathy Pharmacopoeia Committee is constituted in 1962 to establish the standards in homeopathy medicines and the standards of homeopathy medicine also maintained by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Ayush Department. That's all about the homeopathy. 
Next is Sova Rigpa. So, Government of India, Sova Rigpa introduced into Aish in December 9, 2019. The term Sova Rigpa is derived from both the language, which means knowledge of healing. It is an ancient Indian medical system, which was enriched in the entire trans Himalayan region. The origin and development of Sova Rigpa. Sova Rigpa medicine is a centuries old traditional Tibetan medicine system. It is based upon the Indian Buddhist literature such as Abhidharma, Vajrayana Tandras and Ayurveda. The theoretical basis and principles of Sova Rigpa, it embraces the traditional Buddhist beliefs that all illness ultimately result from the three poisons such as delusion, greed and aversion. Then this medicine follow the Buddhas for noble truth which apply medical diagnostic logic to suffering. First truth is life has inevitable suffering. There is a cause to suffering. There is an end to suffering. And the end to suffering is contained in the eightfold path. Buddha also explained about the eightfold path to control the sufferings. So Buddha's eightfold path includes right view, right intention, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right concentration and right mindfulness. The diagnosis and treatment of Sovarikpa. Sovarikpa employs a complex approach to diagnosis such as pulse analysis, urine analysis and also utilize the behavior and dietary modification in a treatment modality. In Sovarikpa, the medicine is composed of natural materials such as herbs and minerals and even physical therapies like Tibetan acupuncture, moksha bashan, etc. to treat the illness. Moksha bashan is a traditional Chinese medicine technique that involves the burning of mugwort, a small spot spongy herb to promote the healing with the acupuncture. So that's about the Sova Rigpa. The summary of the content of Ayush I have made in a table and you can use this uh, table to compare the various treatment modalities in Ayush that is Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Unani System Medicine, Siddha and Homeopathy. The major features of the table is it includes origin and nature of Ayush, uh, theoretical and uh, basic principles of the Ayush diagnosis and treatment, education and research work and practice and drug standards. So you can go through this table for the study purpose and it is a simplified form of the total content I have been explained in relation to the Ayush. So thanks for watching and actually this is a requested video. I hope this video really benefits in your studies. If you feel it is worth and beneficial, please like, share and subscribe. Stay tuned with Angel Health Academy till we meet with another important educational video. Thank you.